Let's look at the difference between signal to noise ratio and EB on N0. We're going to consider a time domain signal in baseband, which is, for example, the recording of my voice speaking. And we're going to look at that in the frequency domain. We'll look at the power spectral density. It's a random signal. So because it's a random signal, it has a power spectral density. And uh, that's in the frequency domain. And then I'm going to consider amplitude modulus modulating it up to a carrier frequency for transmission. And for information on amplitude modulation, you can check out the video that uh, on the channel on that topic. And we're drawing the two-sided power spectral density. Uh, also, if you're not sure what negative frequency is, uh, we have a video of that on the channel as well. It's just a representation. Uh, that comes from the Fourier transform representation. So this is the power spectral density that I've drawn here. And the power in this signal is the area under this curve. This is the power spectral density that I've drawn. OK, so this is the area here is going to be power divided by 2. Now let's think of the noise. We're going to transmit this over a channel. And it's going to have, uh, let's say, we consider white noise, so it's independent noise samples, and the spectrum of noise is flat. Again, there's videos on this on the channel. Uh, and so this is a flat noise spectrum, uh, that the power spectral density of noise, and because it's two-sided, we label this n naught divided by 2. It's a two-sided, so we, we have that factor of 2 uh, traditionally uh, in our labeling n naught on 2. It's a flat power spectral density, all frequencies equally represented in the noise. So what if we receive the signal, which is the transmitted signal plus the noise, uh, which is this noise is in our receiver amplifier and so on, uh, then the first thing we're going to do is to apply a bandpass filter. Okay, so we're going to, in the, in the frequency domain, that means multiply by a, uh, a bandpass filter, which is, means multiply by a spectrum uh, or signal that has a, or a, an impulse response in our filter that has a, uh, the effect of zeroing out all the frequencies that are not contained in our signal. Okay, so this gets rid of all of the other noise, all of the noise at the other frequencies is no longer uh, getting through our bandpass filter, and the noise component in the signal that we were receiving is going to have this amount of power. So this power here, uh, it's uh, n naught divided by 2, because of that height is n naught divided by 2, uh, times W, times W, uh, where this is the bandwidth W, this is the bandwidth of our signal here, W. Okay, so uh, this is the bandwidth I've drawn here. Okay, so this is the amount of, this is the power that's in the noise in our receive signal when we receive our signal, plus of course the noise. Uh, this is band limited noise. Okay, so what does this signal to noise ratio? So this is a power ratio of this area here divided by this area here. Okay, so we've got uh, P on 2 divided by N naught on 2, so the 2's cancel, uh, W. So the signal to noise ratio is power divided by N naught times W. Okay, so this is a ratio of powers. That's the signal to noise ratio. Okay, what is this other thing? EB on N naught. Well, this comes in when we start considering digital signals. So with digital signals in the time domain, I'm going to consider the ideal case of a sync function. So where we're sending a sync, a pulse shape of a sync function. And uh, for information, more information on pulse shaping, there's a video on the channel about pulse shaping, uh, where this is t, uh, 0, uh, minus t, these time slots. This is the digital signal you're going to send. You might send this waveform to represent a digital one, and you might represent the, send the inverse of this waveform to represent a digital zero. So this is digital communications, and you're going to be sending one of these every capital T. So we'll send another one. If we send two ones in a row, then we'd be sending this signal at the next time. And uh, maybe if we sent a negative one at the next time, we'd be sending this signal uh, and, and so on. Okay, so every capital T, we're going to send one of these waveforms. So now instead of average power, now we're more interested in energy that we send over a period of time or, or the adding up of the power over a period of time. So energy is power times time. 
And because of this discrete nature of time when we deal with digital signals, we're interested in the energy ratios rather than the average power ratios. Okay, so this signal here, we're considering that ideal case. So in the frequency domain, the power spectral density of the ideal sync function is a square like this, which exactly uses the frequencies between 1 on 2t, minus 1 on 2t, and 1 on 2t. And then again, if we consider amplitude modulation, such as amplitude uh, or pulse amplitude modulation or QAM, quadrature amplitude modulation, uh, then our signal is going to be up here from our sync function uh, at the carrier frequency. And this bandwidth across here is now 1 divided by t. W equals 1 divided by t in the digital case. Again, our noise is the same. We apply bandpass filtering at the noise because that's where our signals are. And so what we're going to be getting is the, the noise power that we're receiving is uh, uh, here with a, we're collecting in a time uh, period of capital T. Uh, this is of course n naught on two. So the energy now, where we have power up here, we're now looking at the energy collected over a period of time capital T. The energy, noise energy, is going to equal the noise power times T. And what's the noise power? It's n naught divided by 2 times w, and then there's two of them because it's double-sided, times 2, times t because we're collecting it for capital T time. So the 2's cancel here, the w is 1 on t, so this simply equals n naught. So the energy that's collected from the noise over the time period capital T equals n naught. Okay, so this is different from the power, this was average powers, this is now energy over that time period, capital T. Okay, so what was the energy that was sent for this symbol? This is a symbol here, we call this a, sim a, a symbol. Uh, and if it's binary, we just have positives and negatives, and then it's the same as sending a bit, but you could have multiple levels and then you have multiple symbols. So what's the power in the symbol? Well, that's the area, if we square this, uh, and, and, and that's because uh, power is the square of voltage. So if we square this and take the area under here, then this is the power uh, times the time. Uh, this is the energy in our symbol. We call it ES. And the energy in the symbol, as we said, if, you, if, you, if this symbol represents multiple bits, then the energy in the symbol equals the energy in, oh, sorry, then the uh, let's, uh, this gives us an equation where the energy in the bit equals the energy in the symbol divided by log to the base 2 of m, where m is the number of different types of symbols. So for example, you might have 16 QAM, then 16 QAM, uh, 16 log to the base 2 of 16 is 4, so each symbol would represent 4 bits. And that's what you're interested in in digital communication is the ratio of the energy in the that you spend sending a bit energy to the that you send sending a bit divided by the energy that gets collected from the noise in the receiver. So this is the metric that we're interested in for digital communications because it, you're sending it for a finite amount of time. So you're interested now in the energy that was that was used to send each of the bits divided by the energy that was collected in the signal over the period of time that you spent sending those bits. So that's the difference between a power ratio, SNR, and the energy ratio, which is EB on N naught. So don't forget to like this video, it helps others to find the video, and subscribe to the channel for more videos, and check out the other links in the list below for other supporting videos.